Real people, real stories, real issues. Hello and welcome to Season 3 of Share, Learn, Connect. Throughout the series, we'll be exploring important topics like health and well-being, inclusion and belonging, the changes our people are making to influence our communities, and the changes they hope to see in our society. We'll introduce to you ideas, tell stories, and help you get to know your downer colleagues a little better. By listening to other people's perspectives, we hope you'll learn something new and connect on a different level. I'm Ash Panetta, Group Corporate Affairs Officer at Downer, and today we get to speak to Fiona Reiner, an Office Administrator at our Road Services Eastern Creek site in Sydney. Fiona shares her heartbreaking but inspirational story about being diagnosed with terminal breast cancer in her mid-30s, and how she has approached life, family and work over the past five years since her diagnosis. My name's Fiona and I'm a 38-year-old mother of three. I was born in Perth in Western Australia. Been living in Sydney for the past nine years. I have a beautiful five-year-old daughter, Emily, a cheeky four-year-old son, and I'm lucky to be a stepmom to my gorgeous 14-year-old stepdaughter, Charlotte. Downer acknowledges the traditional owners of the land on which this episode is recorded and wherever you are listening to this episode today. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people listening today. This episode contains content that may be confronting to some listeners. Please check the show notes for more details. Hi, Fiona. Thanks for joining us to share your story. Can we start when you were first diagnosed? So I was diagnosed in November 2018 went to a friend's wedding actually in WA. I was getting some pains kind of like in the top of my stomach. Went to emergency. Didn't think anything of it really. The doctors and stuff did some scans and they actually discovered 30 lesions on my liver and from there they investigated a little bit more and discovered that I had a lump in my breast, which I always thought was mastitis from having a blocked milk duct from having two kids. Um, My son was only eight weeks old when I was diagnosed. So as you can imagine, like, you know, a mum of two, you know, you worry about your kids more than what you do yourself. Having the doctors and nurses, midwives say to me that it was mastitis and if it got worse or infected or red or anything like that than to go to emergency. But because it wasn't mastitis, it didn't get infected and it didn't get red. So for me, there was no concern. It sort of was just on the back burner. My kids came first, you know, at that stage. So once they found the 30 lesions, we kind of started looking, they looked into it um, more and I started on really intense chemo, like very, very intense chemo. Mm. Yeah. And that must have been such a horrible experience. It's such an extreme treatment. But for those of our listeners who haven't experienced cancer somewhere in their lives, can you explain what stage four breast cancer is? The stage four breast cancer, which is also referred to as, I guess, secondary advanced breast cancer, is when the cancer from your breast has spread beyond the breast and the lymph nodes and travels outside of the breast um, through the bloodstream to different parts of your body, like your bones and lungs. In my case, my liver and now my brain. Stage four breast cancer is treatable, but unfortunately it's not curable. So the average life expectancy for a breast stage four breast cancer patient um, after being diagnosed is two to five years. We can't imagine what you're going through, Fiona. Can you tell us what life looks like for you right now? Life's been good. I've been pretty lucky in the sense that my body has reacted well to treatment. At the start, I was hit quite hard with an overall chemotherapy. My lesions on the liver reduced dramatically down to, I think, two or three from about 30. The lesions in my breast, they aren't visible in a scan, which is probably the best outcome as a stage four breast cancer patient that you can have is when it's not visible in a scan. They won't ever say, doctors won't ever say that it's completely gone, just refer to it as, you know, not being visible in scan. Then a couple of years later, unfortunately, after a few different treatments, 
the cancer spread to my brain. So at the moment, I currently have two lesions in my brain that are active and two active lesions in my liver. So luckily, it hasn't gone to any other organs um, and spread to date. I've been on probably about seven or eight different types of chemotherapy, radiation. I've had radiation to the brain twice and at the moment I've just come off a clinical trial as well which was at Macquarie University and that was for about 14 months. But I work full time. I had a few months off here and there but for most of the time that I've worked during my treatment and that kind of thing. I take a day off here and there for treatment and normally the first round of treatment, not knowing what the side effects are going to be, um, I uh, have a few days because it's knocks me, locks me around a bit. But apart from that, we've travelled around Australia as a family. We've done a whole lap. We've just finished pretty much a whole lap now of Australia. That's been awesome. Yeah, life just, I guess, it is what it is now. It's You just have to adjust. You have to manage the fatigue and you have to manage, you know, the side effects when they come and when they go, um, the hair loss and, yeah, The way that you've approached this is amazing. You're so inspirational and so brave. Can you tell us about what the future looks like for you? Good question. So the future is, it just, I guess it depends on the the timeline that I'm in at at the time of treatment. It can vary. So sometimes the future for me looks completely normal. You know, I can picture, you know, the kids starting their first days at school, starting high school, my stepdaughter getting her licence, you know, the kids moving out and me and my husband being able to, you know, spend that time together and start that next chapter in our lives. And then there's times where I treatment's not going that great and I don't see a future. I don't see a future past a week. I don't see a future past a month. I see my family moving on. I see my husband moving on. I can see what their life is without me, which makes it really hard. There's days where I feel like I need to make memories so I'm not forgotten. So I am always in the pictures. I'm always in the videos. And I think that's why we did the trip around Australia as well, to be able to make sure that um, you know those memories were there because my kids are quite young and it's the same with work you know you don't want to let people down you want to make sure that you're there you turn up and yeah so it honestly just depends on the headspace that I'm in the timeline of my treatment how I'm feeling makes a huge impact on you know me seeing what the future holds but I guess that's a whole nother part of having cancer that no one you know sort of realizes is the mental health side of it. Mm -mm. Fiona we know this has definitely been a hard conversation so thank you for sharing your story Um, and just touching on what you said about how this has impacted your mental health can you tell us how it's changed during this period? Um, I guess mental health is something that I never has never really affected me in my life and it's something that I never really put together uh, when I was first diagnosed with cancer I never really put the two in the two together but it's definitely there it affects you more than what you realize I guess Um, it's a huge factor um, of cancer and living with cancer it plays a massive role I guess and it affects you in ways that you don't have an understanding of like I mentioned before I see my family and my family's future without me in it. I picture that, I see that, I I have no control over that at all. And that's really hard. It's really hard to know that you're not gonna be there for your children. I guess we all know that, you know, at, at one stage, you know, we're not gonna be there, but to know that, you know, you're not gonna be there now and have to live with that and live in the moment, I guess, is really really hard it's really hard to some days come to work and put uh, a smile on and um, almost like a facade you know that there's all this I guess 
background, you know, going on at work. A lot of people don't know that I'm, I have stage four breast cancer. That's terminal. Um, a lot of people don't know that I don't have any hair because I wear a wig. So it's also dealing with, I guess, living almost like, you know, two lives that you, you have. It's Treatment days are also, you know, mentally challenging. Walking into a cancer ward um, to do treatment where I'm probably the youngest person there and I'm 38. I was diagnosed when I was 32, 33. You walk in and you are, I'm definitely one of the youngest, one of the youngest patients there. And that also is, you know, mentally challenging as well. Oh, we don't think anyone could imagine going through such a traumatic situation at such a young age. Uh, it does sound like you have a strong support network around you though, um, hopefully not just in your home life, but also at work. Down has been really good um, over the past five years from management to, you know, work colleagues. It's almost been like, you know, having your family uh, at work, you know, um, checking up on you, making sure you're okay. There's been days where I've not been okay um, and had that support from my manager to, you know, work colleagues from making sure I got home okay. And in those days that, you know, I wasn't okay. Um, we've had a few hospital visits um, over the past uh, five years. Work colleagues have driven me to hospital for different reasons. It's good to know that you're supported and you've got a, I guess, your, your team around you that, um, you know, look after you. On the days, you know, where I've, I haven't been uh, that great, I guess word goes around the office and, you know, I get, text messages sent to me um, to make sure, you know, everything's uh, okay. And, and obviously my first main concern is always, you know, work and things that I've forgotten and uh, <laughs> all things that, you know, need to be done or people coming in to, to do certain things. Just that, you know, assurance that from my manager and team that, you know, it's all under control and just to take care of myself, uh, which always gets me back to work, you know, quicker. So, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been amazing support. That's great to hear. Um, so as we come to the end of our podcast, firstly, uh, Fiona, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with us. Uh, and is there anything you would like the people listening to take away from your story? I think it's really important for listeners to take away just the awareness of stage four breast cancer. Um, I guess awareness of what it's like to, be, to live with a uh, ter terminal illness and to create awareness so I guess no one else has to go through what I'm going through um, for early detection and hopefully one day stage four breast cancer you know is a chronic disease and you know not a terminal one at the moment there's no cure for cancer um, but prevention um, and early prevention um, is really, really important. Fiona, we appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us today. That was certainly an emotional episode for Share, Learn, Connect. We've recorded this podcast to coincide with World Cancer Research Day on February 4, which is also a significant day for one of Downer's four workplace giving charity partners, the Australia Cancer Research Foundation, whose aim is, like you said, that one day stage four breast cancer is no longer terminal. Thank you for listening. Join us next month for another episode of Share, Learn, Connect, season three.